Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Sincerely Molly, a place where I get to sincerely be myself and share all the things I love. In case you're new around here, I'm Molly and I love capturing New England's charm and sharing all sorts of DIYs, projects, recipes, and of course all things style on here. I'd appreciate it if you took a moment and subscribe now if you haven't already. Today's video, A Guide to Buying Bean Boots, definitely falls into that style fashion category and just kind of practicality. Here in New England, bean boots are essentially a staple. On any given fall or winter day, you're likely to see at least one person clomping around in these duck boots. They are the perfect classic utility footwear for autumn and in winter, boots just make a lot of sense. Winters can be rough here. So since you're watching this video, you're likely interested in purchasing a pair for yourself or someone that you know. My hope is that from watching this, you'll be able to walk away with a bit more confidence when trying to buy that perfect pair. By the time I upload this, if you're trying to purchase them for winter, I'd recommend doing so as soon as possible. The classic styles are often back ordered. Typically the best time to buy them in order to enjoy them during the appropriate season would actually be to purchase them during the summer, if not even before. While L.L. Bean is a known brand, it is a mid-sized company and they do hand make their boots, so there are limitations with that, but the quality definitely makes it worth the wait. Yes, they're based in Freeport, Maine, so if you're ever in that area, I would definitely recommend visiting their flagship stores. It's pretty amazing how many buildings and products they have. Anyway, so in case you're looking to get these boots within a certain time frame, I just keep that in mind that popular pairs often are back ordered, sometimes for months. Now there are outlets as well that just have boxes and boxes of bean boots, but it's definitely hit or miss whether or not you'll find the right size. But if you do find them, then they're often discounted. So that's pretty good. Now to dive into the actual boot. There are a variety of styles to choose from, so definitely check out their website. But today I'm just gonna be talking about the women's original L.L. Bean boot. So this pair right here. I have the 8-inch high ones. They have the 8-inch, 6-inch, and the mock style. I personally went for the 8-inch as I knew that I'd be, you know, shoveling out my car before work and things like that, so I needed them for practical reasons. When I got them at the time, it was important for me to have a boot that I could walk around campus in. That extra height definitely helps with preventing snow from getting into your boot and soaking your feet. Having soaked feet in the winter is not a fun time. I will say they aren't the easiest to slide on. I'd say the 6-inch is probably a bit easier, but both are great for practical use. For the mock ones, those are great to just kind of slip on go out for like a nice fall walk and those types of activities. The 8 inch ones come in brown and navy for the rubber part. I believe the 6 inch ones are in brown and green and the mock style I think has all the options. Once you've narrowed down the height, time to focus on the size. This part is a bit tricky if I'm honest as these boots come in whole sizes only and they tend to run large. On L.L. Bean's website they mention something along the lines of if you wear light kind of mid-weight socks and you have a whole size then to go one size down and if you're a half size then to go one and a half sizes down. But then they go on to say that if you wear thick socks then just to keep your normal size or go to that you know next whole size down. So if you're a seven and a half go to a seven. I'd say that recommendation is pretty fair. To preface I'm a size seven normally so like in Nike and target shoes and everything like that. Initially I got a size 7 pair of boots actually. I had seen a bunch of different reviews that had said you know just stick to your normal size. If you're a whole size just stick to that normal size and you should be fine. So yeah I thought I'd try my normal size. I figured my feet are always freezing so I like to be bundled up and have you know thick warm socks on anyway. So I didn't think it'd be a problem even if they're kind of a bit loose. But even then with the thickest socks on my feet were swimming in those boots. They were way too big. So I returned them. And while that whole sticking to your normal whole size didn't work for me, it could work for someone else. Just be prepared to wear thick socks, I guess. But yeah, I definitely wanted to highlight the fact that they run big. This would be a good time to note though that they do come in narrow, medium, and wide widths. So that could make a difference with that sizing. Maybe if I had gotten a narrow width boot for that seven, it might've been a bit better. I don't know. My recommendation would be to go full size down. Luckily they were easy enough to return, but a size six unfortunately was back ordered online. With that, I ended up going to the outlet and rummaging through all their different boxes and I found a size six at a discount. I will say that my foot is almost to the front of those boots, but even with thick socks, they're still super comfortable and they fit well. Now speaking of socks and warmth, the original bean boot isn't a true winter boot per se. They keep your feet dry and protected but lack that kind of typical insulation that would be found in a true winter boot. Even so, there are simple solutions to this. With the right sock, they're instantly warmer. One of my favorites are the camp socks from J. Crew. L.L. Bean does offer boots with various linings. I believe they have a shearling lined one and then their Gore-Tex kind of thin at one. If you anticipate needing these boots for colder temperatures or prolonged periods outdoors, I definitely recommend looking at those 
options. But if your primary use for them are just for kind of casual fall and winter outings and you know the occasional shoveling like myself, then the ones without a lining might be a good fit for you. It offers a bit more versatility in terms of being able to wear them in the fall and kind of the early spring when it isn't too cold and you don't need like a super thick sock but certainly with the right pair of sock, you can make them great for winter as well. In terms of comfort, my measure of a comfortable shoe is if I can wear them for hours on end and be on my feet and not be in pain. <laughs> I'd say that is the case for these boots. I can recall one experience from early on when I got these boots where I was wearing like a thin pair of socks and I had them on for like hours on end, walking around, all that good stuff. And I experienced a bit of chafing on the top of my foot. Since then, I haven't had a problem. Now for durability, I've had my boots for over five years and they've held up great. I wear mine all the time in the fall and winter and can't get enough of them. They served me very well all throughout college and now into the real world. <laughs> When shopping around for bean boots, there are a couple of things to consider. So the desired height of the boot, the appropriate sizing given that they run big, also the timeline with ordering may be a consideration just due to the high demand, but overall they are a classic and hardy boot, good for the cooler months. If you have any questions just from one consumer to another, please let me know. I do hope you found this guide to be helpful, and if so, please give this video a thumbs up. I would so appreciate it, and I do hope you stick around. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Bye. Thank you.